Um, so welcome everyone to our local labor market action planning event. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Tash Lenteski. I'm the manager of projects and research with Workforce Windsor Essex. And I'm excited uh, to be kind of hosting and facilitating this with you all this morning. Uh, so Workforce Windsor Essex is the local workforce and community development board whose mission is to lead regional employment and community planning for the development of a strong and sustainable workforce. Uh, to learn more about what we do and how we can help you, please visit WorkforceWindsorEssex.com. Uh, for those of you that are newly familiar with our organization, today will be a great showcase of the data collection and analysis that we can do and how we share our findings with the community. So while this event is virtual, we would like to respectfully acknowledge that the land on which we gather today is the traditional territory of the Three Fires Confederacy of First Nations, comprised of the Ojibwe, the Odawa, and the Potawatomi peoples. We are grateful to work, learn, and live in this area. This event is all about learning about what is happening in our community and local labor market, what has changed over the years, maybe for the worse or the better, and what we can, as a collective of community stakeholders, do to improve it. Some of the information may be common knowledge to you, but we hope to shine a light on some of the changes we have witnessed over the last 10 years of putting these reports together. Our goal is to celebrate our local workforce and share our lessons learned to promote further success. <clears throat> uh, for just a couple housekeeping items, please feel free to use the chat feature located at the bottom of the video window to engage with uh, any attendees or speakers. I know we've had a couple conversations in there already. Um, if you have any questions along the way as we're doing the walkthrough, feel free to submit them um, in the chat as well anytime during the session, and then we will uh, do a Q&A at the end. Um, if you have any technical difficulties as well, just please post them in the chat and we'll be, uh, hopefully we can help you with them. Um, like I mentioned before, the session is being recorded um, and we'll be able to share a video file and any uh, links uh, following the session. We also have a quick survey for all of our attendees today to complete following the session. So when you actually exit the Zoom uh, meeting, the survey will pop up with a few questions. It should only take about a minute. It will also be shared in a follow-up email if you don't have time to complete it today. Um, and now I would like to introduce Sam Dallow who will walk us through the new local labor market plan for 2021-22. Sam was the local project lead for the new report. With over 10 years of experience working in technology, coupled with her analytical skills, process improvement skills, and certification in the Tri-Council Policy Statement for Ethical Conduct for Research, she provides data analysis expertise as a labor market and policy analyst. She is also a youth civic engagement specialist whose research, sorry, whose research focuses on industry and civic related curriculum program development. Her pedagogy centers around anti-oppression and anti-racism practices, while applying an intersectional approach to all of her work. Sam holds a Bachelor of Honors in Criminology from the University of Windsor and a Magistrate of Political Science from the University of Waterloo. And without further ado, I will pass it over to her to take us through the report today. Thanks so much, Tashlin. Thank you for that introduction. And thank you again for joining our local labor market plan and action planning event. The Local Labor Market Plan, which is also referred to as the LMP throughout this presentation, is a report that provides an update on the local labor market, including information on demographics, the labor force, Employment Ontario services, and industry in Windsor-Essex. This information is supported by data and feedback from local stakeholders, like you guys, and the plan outlines challenges and opportunities related to the local labor market conditions. This presentation covers the following report sections, our community, our labor force, EO data, our industries, and recommendations. A decade's worth of LLMPs has continuously identified retention and recruitment challenges for employers. This ongoing issue inspired an addition of the industry-related education and training section in the 2021-2022 LLMP. And that is because research has maintained that accessible industry-related education continued education, experiential learning, work integrated learning, are all learning supports for a stable, reliable, and skilled workforce. While the report is rich in content, this presentation will highlight the education as a strategic action plan to help resolve the recruitment and retention challenges employers and industries have been facing for many years. 
We begin with a section overview of our community. This includes any recent population, retirement, migration, immigration, language, education, and income changes. So despite negative impacts of the pandemic, such as reducing immigration to Canada and the settlement in Windsor, Essex, this mid-sized city has seen steady population growth year after year. From 2019 to 2020, our population grew by 1.05%. And there are at least a few reasons why Windsor, Essex has seen this population growth. It's a border town, it's a tip of Canada and experiences most things first. And the housing market, while challenging for lifelong Windsorites, is more affordable compared to housing in larger metropolitan areas. Between 2019 and 2020, age demographics between 15 to 24 years old and 25 to 34 years old have seen a population increase, combined roughly 5.3%. And this indicates that a younger generation is ready to lead the region into a new labor force and economic success. And although the pandemic impacted re retirement and we saw a 20% drop in people retiring, sorry, retiring, there has still been a steady increase of retirement over the last decade. Between 2015 and 2020, Windsor Essex saw a net migration of 13,682 people. Natural growth uh, or population growth through baby boomers declined. And the majority of population growth came from immigration, non-permanent residents, uh, international students uh, who remained in the region through graduate uh, work permit programs. There was a modest decline of net non-permanent residents between 2019 and 2020. But this might be an impact of the global COVID-19 travel restri restrictions for infection control. The COVID-19 travel restrictions on out-migration prompted workers who had to stay in the region rather than move to a region that employs their area of expertise to reconsider their career pathways. Workers reevaluate their careers by developing new skills, upscaling current skills, and transitioning into middle to senior roles or applicable industries. It is important to also note that the migration by age shows that those aged 15 to 24 has the highest net migration. This migration of the younger prime working age demographic can be retained through workforce development and continued education to lower our historically high unemployment rate. Though immigration contributed to a rapid population growth in Windsor Essex between 2015 and 2020, during the pandemic, Immigration fell sharply as travel was restricted by the federal government to mitigate the spread of the virus. There are many challenges that immigrants face when adapting to Canadian workplace culture, such as language barriers, employment barriers, education barriers, as well as access to barriers to community agencies and resources. Community consultations have indicated that there needs to be a more holistic and effective process for supporting newcomers to meaningfully participate in the local workforce. You can find suggestions on how this can be done uh, in the EO section of the LLMP. As of 2019, there is a significant amount of the population that makes less than 50,000 a year. The median total income for 2010 was 29,000 versus the total median income in 2019 of roughly 37,000. Researchers and stakeholder engagement show that compensation is a causal factor for hard to fill occupations. Wage compensation, regardless of vocation or occupation, is vital to the financial and mental health stability of an individual and of families. Housing, food, water, clothing, education, transportation, and internet are necessities for living. And the pandemic has impacted the access to these necessities significantly. Windsor CMA has the highest rate of children living in low-income households in the province at 24%. Page 20 of the report outlines the Windsor Essex County Health Unit's calculation for the 2020 living wage. To sustain a family of four, the hourly wage per earner needs to be $15.52 if the job does not include health benefits, or $14 if it does include health benefits. The current minimum wage has recently increased to $15. Many of our in-demand occupations like retail salesperson, cashiers, and food and beverage servers fall short of the $15.52 wage uh, an hour without benefits needed to sustain a livable lifestyle. 
throughout the pandemic, there's been a narrative that people don't want to work. And we've seen it a lot in the news, but what research is showing is that people are simply just not being paid enough to work relative to the government income supports that are available. At the moment, government support like employment insurance benefits and the worker lockdown benefit, which was previously known as CERB, provide people with a livable income they need to sustain themselves during the pandemic. Next slide, please. The next session of this presentation will cover an overview of labor force characteristics in demand and hard to fill occupations, labor force by industry, and promising sectors and occupations. There was an increase in participation employment rate from January 2021 to November 2021. In the scenario planning report released last March 2021, it was shown that many women were displaced out of the labor force as a result of the pandemic. Since then, there's been nearly 100,000 plus women that have re-entered the workforce from January to November 2021. However, employers and industries still share the concern over finding skill, skilled workers with a specialized skill set. This concern has been met with issues regarding continued education and challenges when finding ways to support a younger demographic entering the workplace. It has been made clear that the region's labor market is in a high state of transition. And this refers to adjusting the region's labor market to respond to the rapid population growth, addressing income and livable wages so that people can live a comfortable, livable lifestyle, as well as providing local industry related education to promote high employment rates. The in-demand and hard-to-fill occupation section of this report leverages data results from the 2021 Windsor-Essex Economic Development Survey conducted by Workforce Windsor-Essex, St. Clair College, and Invest Windsor-Essex. Their report defines and highlights the difference between in-demand and hard-to-fill occupations and demonstrates that a position can either be in-demand, hard-to-fill, or both. The report also defines soft skills and the necessity of having soft skills to support job performance. For example, in the 2021 ECDEV survey, employers responded that machinists were one of the most in-demand positions between January and December 2020. They also reported that machinists were one of the most hard to fill occupations in 2020. Local employers have, communi sorry, have communicated that finding skilled workers for these occupations is very challenging as they require a very specialized skill set. As the labor market continues to change and adapt to economic and social needs, employers are looking for skilled workers that come with the necessary hard skill qualifications, but who have also developed soft skills. The theme throughout the report is just as much about education as it is about labor market highlights. Continuing education positively contributes to a stabilized and qualified workforce. We hear this a lot throughout the report. And this has been supported time and time again by reliable research. In the ACTEV survey, local employers reported that hard to fill positions are often the result of uh, unavailable qualified workers. Of 233 responses, roughly 40% of employers rated the availability of their qualified workers for their business needs as poor to fair. When 225 employees uh, employers were asked whether their company provides continuing education or reimburses employees for continued education. 44.6% of employers reported that they did not provide or reimburse continued education. To promote a stable and attractive workforce, industry leaders should collaborate with education to develop short, flexible programs to support the development of new and entry level workers so that they may become more qualified workers and can pivot into middle and senior roles in their industry or transition to similar industries during economic downturns. The next two slides demonstrate industry and occupational growth. Although numbers appear to be stronger for all of our industries in 2020, there is a still a significant growth happening in 2021 during the pandemic. And that is demonstrated in the manufacturing, wholesale and retail trade, as well as healthcare and social assistance sectors. We also see that growth is happening in the occupations related to these sectors, with registered nurses and registered psychiatric nurses, as well as machinists and machining and tool inspectors, seeing the highest occupational growth from 2021 to 2026. The table on the right uh, between 2021 and 2026 shows that there's a strong industry growth for the healthcare and social assistance, professional, scientific, and technical services, financial, finance and insurance, as well as wholesale trade industries. 
The next part of the presentation covers Employment Ontario data, also referred to as EO data. The section will provide an overview of the demographic, inf demographic information of clients served by employment services, literacy and basic skills, as well as apprenticeships. The following graph shows a breakdown of clients year over year by age range. The largest group served continues to be those aged 25 to 44. While there is a continued dec decrease year after year of client served, there was an increase of clients served within a certain age group. A total of 47% of clients served are those in their prime working years, an increase of 3% from 2017. The substantial decrease of clients served between 2019 and 2021 may be in part a result of the COVID-19 impacts on services and closure of agencies during lockdowns and other public health and safety measures. All age populations experienced a decrease in clients served from 2019 to 2021. Clients aged 15 to 24 being served decreased by 34%, ages 25 to 44 by 27%, ages 45 to 64 by 23%, and ages 65 and older by 26%. This graph shows that between 2020 and 2021, those aged 25 to 44 access employment services more than any other age group. Between 20 and 2021, 53% of clients served identified as female and 47% of clients served identified as male. Identifying females accessing employment services decreased by 1% from 2019 to 2020 and identifying males increased by 1%. Historically, women are less likely to access employment services. And during the pandemic, again, we learned that women were displaced out of employment for multiple reasons. Women are still considered the primary caregiver in many households, and many were expected to leave or reduce their hours of employment to support children who were attending school online, to take care of family members, or had been laid off from their employment as, a business, as businesses reacted to the physical distancing protocols and other public health measures. The disparity between women and men in the labor force is not a new concept. Previous LLMPs have identified this challenge as well. Access to childcare has always significantly impacted the participation rate of women in the workplace. Research continues to suggest that without accessible childcare through government subsidies on a regular basis, there can be no full economic recovery. There is an overall decrease for employment services clients served by designated groups. This decrease is reflective of the reduced immigration to Canada during the pandemic, as well as reduce agency resource accessibility as a result of COVID-19 public health and safety measures. Internationally trained professionals, as well as racialized and newcomer designated groups access employment services most. With internationally trained professionals being the largest designated group seeking employment services between 2020 and 2021, it is vital that employment services partner with education and essential language services so that these groups can receive Canadian certification in same or similar occupations they held in their home country. Page 35 outlines ways local employers can engage with agencies to support the employment of these designated groups. When we look at this graph, we can see that nearly every category of clients served by level of education decreased between 20 and 2021. And the 9% drop of people completing post-secondary education, again, is, might be a result of the pandemic impacts. Many associate the completion of post-secondary education, which can include certifications, qualifications, diplomas, and degrees with sustainable employment. The decrease in post-secondary attainment may also contribute to the high employment rates this region has seen throughout the pandemic. Uh, Windsor Essex reached its highest rate of unemployment in 2021 June at 11.7%. Since 2016-2017, the number of clients out of work for more than three months has continued to decrease. The share of clients out of work for less than three months in 2016 was 46%, which is a 10% decrease over five years compared to the 36% between 2020 and 2021. ESSPs have communicated that to ensure clients do not become disengaged from the labor force while out of work, they leverage Workforce Ones or Essex tools and connect with other agencies that offer skill development to support individuals 
with opportunities for employment. Literacy and basic skills program provides free training in reading, math, writing, and basic work skills. Clients who access LBS typically have a reading, writing, math, and essential skills level that's below grade nine. There have been less LBS clients served over the last three years. And again, this can be related to COVID-19 disruptions. There's also been a significant drop in new apprenticeship, apprenticeship registrations for 2020, 2021. There's 554 total between 2020 and 2021, which is 428 less than the previous year. To balance the need of apprenticeship and to fill the skill and job gap, apprenticeship opportunities must also be tailored to the large newcomer population in the region. There are many qualified potential employees in the newcomer population, but educating on Canadian workplace culture and supporting language barriers must be addressed. Education representatives have suggested through uh, consultations that apprenticeships should consider opportunities where newcomers can learn English, Canadian workplace culture, and industry-related uh, skills simultaneously so that job entry is reduced from five to six years to two to three years. It should also be noted that the Ministry of Colleges and Universities Group Sponsorship Grant continues to provide $100 million annually over a maximum of three years to encourage employers to hire and train apprentices. This section of the presentation will cover local business counts as well as industry updates. I would like to note that the industry trends, highlights and updates as well as COVID-19 impacts and supports can be found in the LLMP. This section of the presentation will cover industry and occupational growth, workforce and drastic tools related to the sector and industry related education that can be used to promote continued education for skilled and qualified workforce. These tables show our local business counts in June 2021. The number of business businesses has actually remained relatively the same since June 2020 for all table categories except for top five industries with the most small sized businesses. The total number of businesses for each industry in this category nearly dropped by 50%. While the reasoning in part has been business closures because of the pandemic, this decrease is highly exaggerated between 20 and 2021, and this can suggest that there are other causal factors that cannot be determined. The next 15 slides cover industry updates. First, we begin with the agriculture industry. There's an expected 2% growth from 2021 to 2026. Some of the projected growth occupations are general farm workers, as well as nursery and greenhouse workers. This growth may be in part related to the Canadian Agriculture Partnership cost share funding program that is a five-year initiative set to strengthen agriculture and related sectors by promoting prosperity and sustainability. As mentioned throughout this presentation, finding and retaining qualified workers has been an ongoing challenge for industries. Here's how local education has responded to this challenge through programs, curriculum, and skill development opportunities. The University of Windsor's continuing education will begin offering their international trade and border management certificate for those in the sector that would like to develop their work skills. And the University of Guelph also offers many online certificates in the agriculture field, such as the horticulture certificate, horticulture diploma, and landscape design certificate, to name a few. Over the last decade, Workforce Windsor Essex has partnered with many stakeholders to develop strategies for a stable and attractive workforce. Strategic action plans that were created over the last 10 years in collaboration with stakeholders have allowed Workforce Windsor Essex to develop a variety of labor force tools to support students, job seekers, parents, educators, and guardians to learn more about local industries. This slide highlights our Workforce Windsor Essex tools related to the agriculture sector. All Workforce Windsor Essex tools and industry-related education have actionable links. So this means in the report, when you're reading through the LMP, you can actually click directly on the certification or program name, as well as the Workforce Windsor Essex tool to be redirected to that program or certification application, sector learning video, or job map that shows current local jobs available in that sector. For the construction industry, there's an expected 1% growth from 2021 to 2026. Some of the projected occupations are construction trade helpers and laborers, as well as electricians, except industrial, industrial and power systems. The Gordie Howe International Bridge has been a big part of this industry growth as it empl has employed 
3,900 workers since 2018, and it is actually up 1,400 jobs from its initial project start. Some of the available industry-related education for the construction sector are the following. The Winter Construction Association offers a series of education and training courses that can be completed online and often in a day. St. Clair College offers three programs for construction trade helpers and laborers, and these courses are available to mature students, so 19 years or older. The Windsor Essex Catholic District School Board offers construction training, including masonry, electrical, carpentry, and plumbing to grade 11 and 12 students at participating schools through their construction academy. All of our construction sector workforce Windsor Essex tools can also be seen on the slide as well. For the education service industry update, there's an expected 2% growth from 2021 to 2026. Some of the projected growth occupations are elementary school and kindergarten teachers, as well as secondary school teachers. Prior to the pandemic and in its early stages, a form of hybrid learning, so online and in-class, was being offered as a permanent alternative to in-class learning. However, the pandemic has demonstrated that small, smaller class sizes, in-class learning, and in-person peer socialization is so crucial to the academic, social, and emotional development of children. This outcome has possibly contribute to the 1.5 increase for in-demand occupations in the educational services over the next five years, as well as the growth of occupations such as kindergarten, elementary, and secondary school teachers. There's currently one local certificate for continuing education in the sector, and that is the University of Windsor's Continuing Education International, International Educator Certificate for the IB qualification. Participating in this course allows teachers to receive an IB certificate in teaching and learning, and it will open up teaching opportunities to the 100 plus IB schools within Ontario. The slide also highlights the COVID-19 impacts on educational services. Community consultations across all four school boards have indicated that staffing numbers are not being met to support children in need of learning assistance. As well, the wage gap between the public and Catholic board when supplying educational assistance may answer why some school boards are finding it harder to retain educators. There's also still the ongoing issue with co-op education and scheduling challenges for students who are interested in experiential learning but can only attend half days. For the healthcare and social assistance industry, there's an expected 8% growth from 2021 to 2026. Some of the projected growth occupations are registered nurses and registered psychiatric nurses, as well as social and community service workers. In 2021, uh, sorry, in October 2021, the Ontario government announced that it would be expanding career opportunities for PSWs and nurses in long-term care who want to advance their careers. By investing $100 million, the provincial government will support the long-term care staffing plan by adding an additional 2,000 nurses to long-term care by 2024-2025. Sorry, 2024-2025. Some of the available industry-related education for healthcare and social assistance sector are the following. The University of Windsor's Continuing Education offers courses and workshops for healthcare professionals in health informatics, project management, and internationally educated nurses, to name a few. The Windsor Essex Post-Pandemic Scenario Planning Report also outlined multiple free PSW program opportunities offered through SC Health in collaboration with SC Career College of Health, as well as Paramed Home Healthcare. St. Clair College also offers two health sciences and nursing related certificates through continuing education. All of our healthcare and social assistance sector workforce Windsor Essex tools can be find, found on the slide as well. This includes our virtual learning events. For the manufacturing industry, there's an expected 1% growth from 2021 to 2026. Some of the projected Growth occupations are metalworking and forging machine operators, as well as machinists and machining and tool inspectors. FedDev Ontario has invested a non-repayable contribution of $7.5 million to invest Windsor Essex. Sorry, for Invest Windsor Essex. This investment has established Windsor Essex as Canada's first world-class automobility accelerator and supports the upscaling of 1,350 automobility entrepreneurs and scaling firms. Some of the available industry-related education for the manufacturing sector are the following. The University of Windsor's Continuing Education offers a certificate at Mechatronic Systems. Their program is divided into three qualification levels to correspond with the job profile of the enrolled worker or student. 
Women's Enterprise Skills Training of Windsor, also known as West, offers a 42-week Women in Skilled Trades, CNC Industrial Mechanic Millwright Pre-Apprenticeship Certificate Program. And this is to help individuals without prior knowledge enter into the trade. St. Clair College also offers pre-apprenticeship programs to encourage job seekers and the future workforce to enter into the skilled trades. And again, our Workforce Windsor Essex School include the manufacturing videos. For the tourism and hospitality industry, there is an expected 4% decrease from 2021 to 2026. However, some of the projected growth occupations are food counter attendants, kitchen helpers, and related support occupations, and food services supervisors. The pandemic heavily impacted the sector. And while this number does not look promising right now, localized efforts can help pivot and have helped pivot um, this decrease by reimagining localized tourism and hospitality. To encourage the reimagining of localized tourism and hospitality, local education offers the following. The UHC Hub of Opportunities is offering a pre-apprenticeship for cooks programs at no cost. As an occupation intended to grow by 70% over the next five years, this is a great way to explore philosophy, ethics, and directions towards food and, and a successful career in the culinary arts. People currently working in the sector and related occupations can also add to their food services qualifications by receiving a food handler course certificate. And this is offered by the Windsor Essex County Health Unit in person for a low cost, or you can do it online for free. To learn more, LLMP readers can click on the Workforce Windsor Essex tools to watch a tourism and hospitality sector panel event and to see all the um, opportunities that TWEPI is investing in the tourism and hospitality sector. For the transportation and warehousing industry, there's an expected 6% growth from 2021 to 2026. Some of the projected growth occupations are transport truck drivers and material handlers. The, reason, the region's designation as a foreign trade zone continues to positively impact economic and job recovery in the sector. Next slide, please. Thank you. Some of the available industry-related education for the transportation and warehousing sector are the following. So once again, the University of Windsor's continuing education offers a program in international trade and border management. Invest Windsor Essex Automobility and Innovation Center website is also available to help people learn more about their programs regarding technology, services, and products related to border logistics and border security. You can also access multiple truck driving schools in Windsor to obtain an easy license for one of the top growth occupations in the sector. And to learn more, LMP readers can click on the Workforce Windsor Essex tools to explore our transportation and warehousing career portal and videos. Finally, for the information and communication technology industry, there's an expected 6% growth from 2021 to 2026. Some of the projected growth occupations are mechanical engineers, as well as financial auditors and accountants. The University of Windsor has been ranked number seven for the top 10 cities in Canada for degree completions in technology. But retaining these graduates is challenging as the most crucial barrier to retention and hiring has been wage compensation. So compared to our competitor, competitors, sorry, like Waterloo Kitchener and the GTA, the median wage compensation for our professional scientific and technical services in Windsor is 46 or roughly 47,000, compared to Waterloo Kitchener's at 60 and GTA's at 60, roughly 62, I should say. Some of the industry related education for the IT sector are the following ICT sector are the following. The University of Windsor's continuing education offers project management courses a technical writing workshop series, AutoCAD foundation workshops, as well as SAP and an introduction to data, data analytics for management and engineering. St. Clair College's continuing education offers accounting studies, as well as additional certifications in businesses and IT, business and IT. And WES offers a C program, science, engineering, artistry, and technology to support young women ages 15 to 30 who are interested in STEAM or STEM. The program supports women to learn about robotics while developing leadership skills and connecting with mentors in the STEM field. The Workforce Windsor Essex tools for the sector continue to grow and readers can learn more about the ICT industry by clicking on any of these actionable links in the report. The last part of this presentation covers some of the LLMP's recommendations for support and education career pathways, financial support, and childcare support. 
These recommendations are developed out of community consultation with stakeholders and industry leaders, research as well as municipal, provincial, and federal supports. The LLMP recommends the following for supporting education and career pathways. So businesses should continue to collaborate with local education institutions to offer hard skill development, soft skill development, on-site training, and online training to retain current employees, promote career growth, and recruit future, recruit future employees. Post-secondary institutions should also change the promotion of tenure measurements to integrate student career success and experiential learning into teaching, course, teaching courses and program requirements. Employers should continue to take advantage of the Skills Development Fund provided by the Ministry of Labor, Training and Skills Development to help support the skill trades and technical occupations. Here are some of the LLMP recommendations for financial support. In September 2020, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced that the federal government would be collaborating with Black-led businesses and organizations, as well as institutions to offer $250,000 in financial support for Black entrepreneurs and business owners. The Black Entrepreneurship Loan Fund accepts application for loans through the Federation of African-Canadian Economics, also known as FACE. The Achievement Incentive Grant was announced in March 2021 and offers an eligible employers up to $4,000 to provide sorry, up to $4,000 to provide an apprenticeship apprentice with in-class training and achievement of, the certif of a certificate of apprenticeship or certificate of qualification. The government introduced the Canadian, wage the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy in April of 2020 to support industries impacted by closures and revenue decrease as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is continued on the next slide. And the federal government's regional development agencies and innovation science and economic development Canada are supporting tourism businesses and organizations with a $500 million investment ending March 31st, 2023. This investment will be administered through the Tourism Relief Fund. The Indigenous Tourism Ontario's partnership with Ontario Tourism Education Corporation and Tourism Industry Association of Ontario helped develop a Three Fires Collaborative Quest program. Successful participants will receive a wage subsidy of up to 30% with a maximum of $3,000 per employee hired. This initiative will carry into the 2020, uh, 2022 year. And finally, the Canadian Ontario Job Grant can help employer, local employers receive one sixth of eligible training costs. Last, here are some of the LMP recommendations for child support. Accessible childcare relieves some barriers from women who are displaced out of the workforce as a result of being a primary caregiver. One HSN, which is Windsor and Essex County's Child Care Registry, acts as a central space for access to child care programs and subsidies. Programs like One HSN have the potential to bring Windsor Essex closer to gender parity in the labor force. Also, the Early On program was created to offer free local high quality child care services for parents, caregivers, and guardians with children up to six years old. There are 30 early on child and family centers, CFC, across Windsor Essex that support early learning for children and engage with parents and caregivers to provide information for child development. Child care solutions like early on and CFCs are needed to ensure, are needed to ensure that women's participation in the labor force improves in a sustainable and meaningful way. So that concludes the um, community walkthrough uh, portion of this uh, presentation. So thank you for mu so much for your time. Uh, Tashlin, I don't know if you would like to move into a Q&A now? Yeah, so I know I saw a couple of people kind of furiously writing down uh, notes and things like that, but I promise you everything we covered is in the report. It's kind of your little summary booklet. Um, and again, we will be sharing uh, this video as well. Um, but if anyone does have any questions, feel free uh, either raise your hand and we'll call on you or you can put it in the chat as well. And thank you for the, the comments, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you. Tashlin, I received a direct message, somebody um, asking, is the job growth projections uh, mainly due to retirements? Um, in part, I would say, yeah, because we are experiencing an increase in retirement now, um, especially that 
we kind of entered, I don't want to say we entered a, a, a post pandemic, you know, workforce, but it has increased. So in part, yes. And then um, the pandemic has also showed the necessity of having, you know, additional uh, occupational growth in sectors like healthcare and social assistance in manufacturing and transportation and warehousing. So um, just to respond to that demand, that's why we're also seeing that, that uh, occupational growth, that job growth. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Nancy. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Um, uh, I think your information about the COJG might be backwards. Uh, it, can um, it can support up to five sixths of the cost of training. So for larger companies, it would be 50-50. For smaller companies, up to the five sixths. For unemployed people, it might even go um, to uh, full support yeah the there's more detail thank you nancy so for the uh canadian ontario job grant um, that's what you're referring to correct in mm -hmm. the lmp there there was a uh some portion of a breakdown in that ontario uh, job grant and so it was just in part highlighted the one in six um for this particular presentation but you can see more of that detail in the L in, in the llmp report um there's more to that's the structure of that uh, Ontario job grant, but thank you. You are correct. Yeah. Um, and Sean, you have your hand up as well. Uh, first, great presentation. Lots of uh, useful you. information here. I'm sure a lot of us will take this back to our tables and uh, share with our teams. Um, one thing that we, we've noticed in hearing from our job developers on the front line is uh, the expectation on of employers, they're used to getting very highly qualified, um, very precise people that uh, they can get to fill jobs. And as we have less and less people, we're finding to uh, that we need to educate employers and, and try to encourage them to take people with less qualifications yeah. and hence why we have an employment Ontario to offset those costs. So um, I think part and parcel, there's there's a piece here where we're going to need to actively engage employers and, and just educate them on sometimes you got to work with what you got, the people of old and the standards of old, are, uh, the pendulum has shifted a little bit. So there just needs to be a little bit more willingness to train uh, new people and, and be a little bit more patient. For sure, Sean, I completely agree. Um, I do want to say that you know, a part of uh, a part of that is for employers to kind of see this kind of collective agreement of investing in people. We need to invest in our current workforce, and I think that comes directly from that ECDEV survey information where they said that you know, education reflects having a skilled workforce, but almost half don't offer continued education or reimbursement for education. So there's going to have to be some sort of agreement, uh, an investment in their current, uh, depending on the industry, their current employees or the potential employees that they, uh, that come in, you know, if you want to see that qualified skill set, if you want to see that specialized skill set, you're going to have to catch all by offering that kind of education as well. Right. So I agree. Yeah. And sorry, just a secondary, more of a comment. I think now we're really seeing uh, the importance of newcomers to the Canadian economy, yes. especially uh, locally. Um, this really highlights the, the need to, sorry, got stuff going up above me here. Uh, construction, um, the importance of bringing new Canadians in to fill th this gap, uh, mm -hmm. especially a lot in the service industry that they, you know, over the summers, we see them in the restaurants and, you know, the clothing stores and, and whatnot. And it, it's, we're, we're, there's a quite a struggle. So hopefully we do get the borders and this pandemic, whatnot under control. We can, you know, do some catch up in fact on bringing new Canadians and uh, they're hungry to work and we, we need them. Those are really great uh, sure. comments, Sean, and keep those in mind when we go into the breakout rooms because those will yes. uh, be covered in there. Um, I just wanted to jump just to a couple questions in the chat. Um, so Sula asked about how our recent unemployment rate compares to the rest of Canada or Ontario. Um, so in January, we did see that bump locally with our unemployment rate. This was also experienced across Ontario. Um, so I would say we've been pretty, uh, pretty in line with the province. Um, a lot of it is going with flows with lockdowns, um, but we were um, doing quite good. Um, we were no longer kind of the top of Canada for our, uh, the last couple of months. So we were seeing some improvements. So it's something to keep an eye on as we uh, move forward. 
Um, another question around regional entrepreneurship and new startup companies. Um, this is an area that we don't have a ton of data on. Um, Hopefully once we get new census data coming out in November, which will lead to a, a very uh, fulsome uh, report next year, um, we'll mm -hmm. be able to get some more information there. Um, we do have some great information though on female entrepreneurs um, through our RISE reports um, that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. So keep an yeah. eye uh, out yeah. for that. Actually, Tashlin, I'd like to add to that. This, uh, this year's uh, LMP also included an entrepreneurism section. You'll find it after the ICT section. And I would like to thank uh, We Tech Alliance who provided a lot of that information to us and who met with uh, Adam, who met with me. So there is some information on the growth of entrepreneurism in our region. It's mostly around the ICT sector. So I, I would also like to highlight that as well. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, we'll go to Carrie next. Oh, hi there. Hi, Carrie. Hi, just, just to build on Sean's comments too, I just wanted, thought it might be a good time to, um, to plug or highlight a new program that we just launched in partnership with uh, Investments or Essex and nice. the uh, Canadian Career Apprenticeship Initiative, but to help sort of with, with employers um, to be able to in, make that first investment, an initial investment and take a chance on someone and also to explore new talent pools. So we just launched this this week. Uh, it was in the news and, you know, we're working on a little bit more promotion right now as well, but it's got Windsor Essex Canadian or when, Windsor Essex Career Apprenticeship Program. So the idea is also in partnership with our Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences at the University of Windsor. That's so it's amazing. new grads. Yeah. And basically the CCAI, the funder will um, support one third of that first year salary for a local full-time job for a, a graduate from a FAST program. So students that just finished, basically for the FAST students that'll be graduating in June, um, nice. if they're coming out of an undergraduate FAST program. Um, so it's to help, you know, keep local talent here and, you know, alleviate that pressure. Sometimes young people feel to, you know, go move to a different big city to get that first career experience. Um, but yeah, we're really excited about it. So I just thought this was a great table to make sure you all yeah. know about that. I'll drop a link to some of the program information. In yes, the chat please. If anyone wants to share. Yeah, awesome. Thank yeah, you. that'd be great. Thank you so much. Sorry, it's <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, thank you, Carrie. And we'll go to Nancy just for a final question. I just want to make sure we have enough time for our breakout rooms. Nancy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Um, hi, Nancy. Hi. <laughs> Uh, question is about work from home. So, mm -hmm. um, do we have any stats on on uh, that for the local market? And also, does anybody know of any supports for businesses that want to increase their work from home uh, activity? So I can speak to the first half, uh, no local stats, but there the provincial is that 25% of people will continue working from home. Um, and this is relatively, I would say a couple of years old, that, that uh, data. So probably early on from the pandemic when we were kind of moving into this work from home uh, structure. But um, as of last, roughly 25% will continue to work from home. But I think your second part of your question, which is like what support systems exist in, that's not, not something that was included, but that's really important and, and possibly uh, can fit into next year's LLMP. But uh, it will probably be a big part of, you know, will people support work from home for a lot of their organizations? So I don't know, does anyone uh, have any of that uh, information or? I can actually jump in there. Yeah. We recently did a survey on remote work. Um, we got a really good response rate from employees. Um, so that will be up on our website, that kind of infographic with their responses. So you can see what employees are saying. Um, we had a, a pretty low response rate for employers. So we're going to um, add questions into our next year's economic development survey. Um, and fingers crossed, we have a proposal out for a specific project um, that focuses uh, directly on remote work. So hopefully we'll have some more findings uh, in the next coming year, actually. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Um, okay, so just for the sake of time, I want to get this in. Any other questions that anyone has, feel free to put them in the chat and in our follow-up email, uh, we'll include some uh, question and answers in there uh, as well. Um, and there's lots of link sharing. We'll be sure to share all that. Um, Sorry, um, Tash, and I just want to answer uh, Nami's question. Nama, are you asking like what factors have contributed to the job growth per, like projections per sector? 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like most importantly. Yeah. yeah. Um, just to answer that real quickly, uh, the fact that our uh, population is growing like rapidly adds to why, uh, first of all, our in demand or our, our, you know, our, our in demand or growing sectors have increased even more significantly, like we see 6%, 8%. So that's in part because of it. A lot of it, as again, is learning the importance around healthcare and social assistance and education. And, you know, again, manufacturing, transportation and warehousing throughout the pandemic, I think that kind of uh, validated that these are in very important sectors. And so we need to invest more into, into these uh, industries, especially in a region that continues to grow, is situated in a really nice location as a, a foreign trade zone. Um, so I, a lot, there are a lot of uh, factors that contributed to the, to the sector growth, but specifically in education and the health and, and manufacturing transportation is because also impacts of the pandemic have again, just supported why there are, we need more people in those, in those sectors. So I hope that answers your question, but yeah, I just wanted to get to it. That was all great stuff. Thanks so much, Sam. No problem. Thanks, Sam. Um, and like I mentioned, any other questions that come up, we will uh, answer those in our follow-up email. Um, so just moving on to our breakout groups. Um, so the next part is our breakout discussion. As you can see on the screen, these are the four topics that we want to cover. So Sam mentioned a lot of these or all of these in her presentation. Um, so the first is connecting education and industry to better support experiential learning opportunities, employee recruitment and retention strategies. So kind of uh, jumping on what Sean asked about, um, occupation specific language training and employment supports for mature job seekers and career changers. Um, so for our uh, breakout rooms, uh, these will look are the four topics, you can pick one or pick multiple to kind of jump through. Um, so what we want to do today though, is solely focus on brainstorming solutions to these issues. Sam talked a lot about what these challenges um, kind of contribute to, but for this next part, I wanna do just solutions. Um, so we wanna hear both your big, grand, large scale ideas, um, as well as any of those small steps that you think will lead to success. So whether your idea falls under your organization's mandate or someone else's, we want to hear it still. Each discussion will have facilitators and note takers to help you organize your ideas and record them for next steps as a community. Um, and our organization will not be able to tackle all of these ideas um, that are shared today. So we want to make sure that these are collaboration ideas and community leaders are included to take on these potential initiatives. Uh, we wanna make sure that today is focused on group-led tangible actions to support our local labor market. Um, like I mentioned, feel free to jump into more than one breakout room if you have something to, to, to contribute to multiple discussions. 